Oh Where's god, that's loud as shit. Just ran and I, I don't know where I am. Yeah, go left. Go left. Go left. Okay. I'm going. Wait. No. Oh, it's Okay, so where we left off last time, I think I killed. Oh, I was. I remember. I was so mad. I killed the the guy in the maze, the like virgin in the maze. Oh my god, that was not my fucking fault. I don't know how he died. I still don't know. I refuse to go back and watch the footage because I'm pissed about it. But I'm sure when I watch it, when I edit it, uh, it's it's gonna be evident because when I was editing uh, the first video, which is already up on my my YouTube, if you like missed a bunch of it, I figured out what I, where I went wrong in the first one. I was supposed to like help the girl with the car, the jazz girl, who like I ended up electrocuting. Um, I found the note that said like, oh, I took your magazine on how to jack a car. I took it because I was taking a shit in the restroom. So I should have checked the restroom because that's where my answer would have been. So after reviewing the footage from last time I played, I know one that I'm an idiot. I, I space out everything just fucking, okay. But I also realized after the fact that I need to be more, aware. It's the whole point of the game. I should have already known how to do that. But anyway, I killed the virgin in the maze and I'm pissed about it. That's where we left off. And yeah, we'll see where, where, where else we go. Okay. Load, load the game. Let's get in there. And thank you for calling in Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next <laughs> caller is up for us. So take it away. I also cannot. <gasps> I was literally going to say, I haven't been able to figure out how to put this wrench down in. and I just have to switch hands. So now I won't have that in my hand anymore. That was irritating me. Wow. Awesome. Tyler, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. The Scream. The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Huh? Long Ride Home. That old song. Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. She sounds Thanks. like Bella Swan. Good to hear it again. All right, folks. She sounds like Twilight. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? Squeeze no, me? No, I, I threw it out the window earlier today. Had a little tantrum? Hello, Peggy? Had a little tantrum? Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. What's so bad about the song? For shame, For Peggy. For shame, Peggy. For, For shame. shame. I know. For shame. Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Well, Here comes some un- Requested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow oh. night. Sorry. Don sounded so distraught too. That's so fucked up. Just put that down there. Peggy. Peggy, how could you? Wonder if we'll ever see Peggy's face. Probably, probably. But of all the songs to record, I feel like she's gonna die why soon. Why have to be that one? Gee, Peggy. What did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. Oh, <sighs> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. What's like the song that you guys would throw out the window like that? Like a song that you despise so much that you cannot stand listening to it. I, I actually don't know what mine would be. I think Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke. I <laughs> fucking hate that song. All right, let's play this. Ready? Shut the music off. Oh, sorry. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189. Any Taylor Swift song? Aw. This is Forrest Nash. Yeah, I'm not really Swifty either. Forrest. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank 
my god. Murphy. What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I. Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? Master Robbie? It's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn place. Of, uh, he came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock uh. dumpster. I got a flashlight, but. Oh. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> oh, goddamn. <laughs> I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. Oh, goddamn. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On yeah, it. Peggy. <laughs> All right. Now just. What's up, Crudy? Come on, pick up. Felt so bad because you last year my dad fell asleep. I was so. Hi. <laughs> yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Shadows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? Dude, there's nobody that lives in this town. Oh, I swear God to God. damn it. Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But oh my I God. Have friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? Oh. My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho I'm on the field. east end of Myers Lane. My he's old. He's really old. Okay. okay. I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Oh my god, she said that so fast. I don't She said one lives right here and the in the uh, the intersection of Romero and Haddonfield, so kind of right here. And then another one lives east of Myers Lane, which east east west east over here. Peggy Peggy, that was too fast. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Peggy, say it again. Peggy, say it again. Where is Murphy again? Forrest, really? He just I'm sorry. Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. I know, but okay, where are your okay. friends? I'm sorry, I forgot. She said one of all, oh, bro. Okay, one of them lives here. One of them lives here. I don't remember who, what name. Can I see what she said? Wait, did I just find, like, something wrong with the game? Did I just find something wrong with the game? How am I supposed to remember exactly what she just said? I need it visually in front of me. I'm a visual learner, Peggy. I'm a visual learner. I'm literally... Okay. Well, Forrest, I'm just gonna guess then. Who can help Murphy? Alex? Maybe I'm, I'm gonna guess Alex. Alex. All right, give me a second. That's bullshit. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. Really? You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Oh, they're not gonna get there in time because I probably didn't fucking choose the right one because she talks so fucking fast and then I'm trying to figure it out. Forrest, I'm getting a call. I swear to God, I'm gonna get so mad right now. Okay. Are you sure you can't? <laughs> God dang it. What's happening, Peggy? No. Alex was too far away, too slow. The plant burned down, it collapsed. So Murphy is, <sighs> poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. How is that my fault? How is that my fault? She was like, bruh, bruh, here and bruh, there and bruh, bruh, there. Like, and, and, then, and then she's like, east of this road and this road. I'm like looking and I'm like, okay, east, uh, east is this way, road is this, it, uh, what was the name again? How was that my fault? No, I'm pissed off. All off the bat, off the bat, just. Jeez. That's no way for anyone to die. Terrible way to go. Yeah. Fuck this game. How do they not have like a replay on that? We will stop this for you and for Fernando. Peggy, it's going to be our. Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. Oh my God, okay. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens right. is on the line. Focus. Let's see what they have to say. Focus. 
Welcome to 189.16 The Stream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors. Dude, shut up. This awful time. Shut up. Oh, this is not your free press conference. Candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows, are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep <laughs> us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider. This game you is really good at making the characters insufferable. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. Mm-hmm. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Cool. Yes. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, what, what are you going to do about it, Teddy? Hmm? I'm the one doing everything. What are you going to do about it? Hmm? You're a prick, I Teddy. I make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows family <laughs> factory... Is this guy fucking radio? Or not a radio, a robot? Or C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over two... Yeah, turn off. Yep, Teddy, off. unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. Turn it off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining Oh my god, yeah, he talks time. so slow. You know what it is? <laughs> I know. I agree. Uh, emergency, not problem. The whistle. Yeah, it's definitely not the whistle man. Hmm. Your your family's waste plant burned down? Your hmm. Family waste plant just burned down? Yeah. So now we have nowhere to dump our garbage? The problem is that woman, our current mayor. Linda Cartwright. Oh, here uh, we go. Hell she just not. isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, oh, unstable, and not. You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. You'll never. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. <laughs> I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back. Dude, yeah, the voice acting is so good. And the, the way they write the characters is amazing because it's like, I, I, he's insufferable. Absolutely insufferable. Where's that American one? Is it this one? No. Which one's this? One? Oh yeah, I want to play that one. Right? Oh, no, no, throw. I want to play this one. Oh no! Wait. Time to play a No, this is his. This is his. Uh, well, I guess it's fitting. I guess it's fitting. Let's put it in then. Grab a cassette. We All right, Peggy, give me a fucking second, Peggy. I swear. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. <laughs> Gallows Jr. I was gonna say one like bet when to hear a bald Teddy eagle. Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs. Four seconds in. Improve infrastructure and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews who after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy he's Gallows he's dead now, so that doesn't really matter. Dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. That's Vote such a Teddy stupid Gallows slogan. Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. I love how I cut him off air and then played an ad for him. Right, <laughs> isn't super herself, but she's not. Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, no. just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Yeah, horrible slogan. Ugh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Stuck in uh, high school? Of course he's one of those guys. Yep, peaked in he high school. lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just 
get back to the show. Well, folks, Linda's a good mayor. She's a good mayor. Me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. <laughs> you mean at. take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. No. Well, let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Caller on line one. All right, I'm ready to save some lives. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> Oh. Uh, I love when that music plays. Hello. Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing <laughs> in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. How? How does one guy just get away with all this? I can see him from up here. God damn it! She's just a kid. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Are, are you find that safe? out first. Oh my god! Oh my god! I mean, stay with me, kid. Focus. She's in a barn. I, I can't do this. Or something like that. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? <sighs> Bitch, you need to say something. Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Yes, yeah, sweetie. Sorry, I misspoke. Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. Old well, murder house? There's, there's a bathroom, like a entrance closet. Okay. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? A bathroom, couple bedrooms, and closet. I don't see it on here, so I don't think that's it. Bathroom, couple bedrooms, closet? Um. Yeah, we, we probably go to the closet, right? Go to the closet. Okay. I'll... He's here. He's here. He's gonna kill me. They didn't give me Forrest, anything to go off of. I don't think we can. Don't move. 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 Okay, well, well, Forrest! <laughs> what? Are you fucked? What? Are you, are you kidding me? Okay, what the hell is going on here? Cops? Oh my god. Just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that Jimmy? That wasn't funny, you sicko! Who the fuck's Jimmy? Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you Forrest doing? Forrest Nash! It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. Jimmy. Right. I'm out of here. Uh, you're sick, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. I'm telling the whistling men to kill to you, Jimmy. What? It's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh no. Oh no. Who are you? Oh no, man. Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy! Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, 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 run, run. Everyone, run! Run, 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 run. Scott Heather, you barricade the back. Oh, now she can talk? He's out there, and we're in here. We're safe, right? Now she can talk? much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house. I don't see it on here. Of course. The van. Who's got the keys? Jimmy has
Oh oh. Oh 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 oh. Jimmy's a fucking idiot, dude. Don't cry over him. It's gonna be okay. Okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. Yeah, shut up, Heather. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Instant karma for Jeannie. Jeannie or McPherson? Jimmy. Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. Ooh. She stayed in tonight. Forced, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And, no, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Huh? Everything okay? No. We, uh, We're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things that are just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Oh. Or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But... I... Shut up, you... Oh, Forrest, I'll call you Excuse me? And I don't know anything about your friends. <sighs> Hello? These damn kids never learn. Gotta take a personality test or something? Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, mm. <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one... Goes out to all the trap kids out there. Uh, to all the trapped kids out there? Just, oh yeah, your final breath, dude. You guys are gonna take your final breath tonight. You guys just wanna fuck around and be fucking idiots all night. You guys are gonna take your final breath. There you go. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, Final Breath. Final Breath. Peggy. Are you about to whoop some ass? For real. An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Mm -hmm. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. No, right. don't tell me that. Let me see if I can find her desk. No, don't tell me that. she has something we can use. No, please. Please, no. No. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Okay, we know the Whistly Man that was at the murder house, so he cannot be here. I don't like the music day. Oh wait, this is not downstairs. This is downstairs. I do not appreciate the ambiance. Pretty scary. Here's a mouse trap. Jeez. They really oh my god. <laughs> they said she's she's the Harry Potter of the office. She just, you know, tucked away. Um Friendship What is this? Quiz. This might work. What was that? Did you guys hear that? There was a loud ass bang. Anyway, most likely to, most likely to, most likely to. Okay. Okay. This is probably all we need. What the fuck was that? I scared. I scared, I scared, I scared. Found it, Peggy. Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship <laughs> I quiz my phone. with Shut all up. these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one, whenever you're ready. Okay, I got this, guys. I'm not gonna okay, fail this Forrest, one. Shut the music off. Oh, sorry. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be I got you. Exactly. I got gotcha. you. I'm ready. What's the first step? I know everything about teenage girls. First things first. We'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather, Kyle, and Hot David? Peak Mount Everest. Easy. Easy, Heather. Heather, Heather, Heather. Heather. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Yeah. Now, please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Pick the lock. Jennifer and Scott all want to do it. Ooh, 
Definitely most likely to escape prison, so we gotta go with Jennifer. Jennifer! Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer Jeez. got that. Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? <laughs> a bump key? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. Oh. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so it'll probably be easier that way. That True. Part four. Uh, this plan is impressive. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, very impressive. It's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing okay. great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between. Easy. Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. Olympic athlete, hot David. Let's go. This one's 10 times easier than the fucking other ones that I've been doing. Oh my god. Hot David. <laughs> so yeah, much easier. You, uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, hot David. Sorry. You got this, oh, hot David. Let's recap. Did you hear that? We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. Ooh. Okay. What's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Huh. Number two is most likely to win the award for worst poker face. Cynthia's got two marks on that, which means she's the worst liar. So we got to go with Tammy because she's only got one. Yes. Tammy. Tammy, if you survive this, never do that British accent again. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get Let's out. Let's go. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be? Who have we got? Chad. Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Chad, Scott, and Cynthia. Scott hasn't been picked yet, though. Right? It's between Scott and Cynthia, but I feel like I've already chosen Cynthia, haven't I? Please turn over. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I just fucked that all up. I'm so mad. <laughs> oh, um. It says that Scott is most likely to to beat everyone at go karting, but Cynthia's most or Scott is also most likely to end up in a car crash. So we probably gotta go with Cynthia on this one. I'm gonna just try to sell this just as much as I can. I'm so mad about that. Cynthia. I'm so mad about I that. I love watching American Skid. Yes, I... Yeah. Just do what they did in the movie. Uh... Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves. And then it's go to... There's no way I got Sounds that. Good. Talk to you in a sec. There's good no luck, way Harry. I got that. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Nah. Yeah. I think they're screwed. Yeah, I think uh, they're screwed. Let's hope you're wrong. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. I don't think it's worth restarting. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Mm. Alrighty then. I might restart it if I, if I fuck it up. Here we go, everyone. Spotter, to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. 
his face is lying next to him for his god, god damn oh god focus. focus wait i think i did get the Breathe. the the right one for for uh right the pankies for oscar got him it's uh, jennifer got the gate unlocked and then the tammy And then I picked You're Tammy for the poker great. face. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right. Or to win an Oscar. Get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. No, he doesn't. Now, push the bookshelf over. Oh my god, they both went through the floor. Spotter, we need to climb down now. We gotta go. They both went through the floor? I didn't get it. Huh? What? It won't stay open. I'll hold it. You drive through. Carrie! What was that? It's the whistling man. Drive! Now! Oh my god. Please, no! No! Carrie? <sighs> he just... He just stared at me. Carrie! Carrie? Carrie? He just stared at me. And walked into the woods. you're okay can you get somewhere safe <sighs> i can make it home thank you both for helping if you hadn't i it was your plan carrie and it was a great plan <sighs> you get home now carrie before he changes his mind right i i need to get home Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... I did it? That was a lot. Oh. Well, thoughts go out to the parents. It the kept teasing me, dude. Won't make it it kept teasing me. I didn't think I had it. Kids listening in. Please oh stay my God. And stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Bro. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. I can't believe I didn't notice the fucking... I need to read. I need to read. Because I'm not looking at that side. I'm not looking at... Like, I can read the paper just fine. And then I see PTO at the bottom. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, oh my God. Thank, thank God that you could fucking make that out from the first page pretty much hey we had a call come in oh i needed that hey, i needed that shot. dub hit the button and take the call my bad my bad my bad my bad, 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 bad. 
Forrest Nash here. <laughs> Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. Thank you. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 Ooh. system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. Roller Ricky. And I now consider you a friend, my man. Oh, let's go. Thanks, friend. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks, friend. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. No freaking way, dude. Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. Back then. <laughs> I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff Over went here. down. Long time and turn to the bottle. Tell me you guys just saw what I saw. The notes are right here. Oh my god, bro. It's just not my night. It's just not my night. After I went on the whole spiel about, oh, I have to just pay more attention, I'm not paying attention at all. Thank Look at bro. this shit. I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. Sharing that burden just took so much weight. Notes. It's a long story from there, but I'm so I found roller disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh. Oh. oh, hello, Max. Oh, oh hi, Max. The well, good boy. He certainly sounds like Such a good, good boy. boy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. That's At cool. First they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. <laughs> Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie Ooh. loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. That's cute. These are a great <laughs> pair. It sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. Yeah. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Yeah. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. For a Before boogie? I switch my radio off for the night. Can I request a song for us? Hell yeah, dude. Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. Yeah. Um, Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Ooh. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. We get the oh, boogie. Got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. We got the boogie. Which one should we do for the boogie? Let's do this one. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, that's boogie music. I really yeah, I'm so pissed about this. After everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my and taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the break like that. Lane. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> you he were stunned. thinking about Max on skates, weren't Should've you? Should have been Jericho, man. Would you look at that? Another Should have been Jericho. What are the odds? Better take it. Yeah, because Jericho was right here and the fucking girl was right here. Oh, oh okay. Oh, turn the music off first. And then Welcome go. back to 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. Oh, Carrie. I made it home safe. Carrie! Hey! hey. I, I just <laughs> to thank you for doing I like that. what you could earlier. <laughs> Not everybody made it, and uh, I don't know. Hey, we didn't okay? make it though. Other you than were Jimmy, so brave earlier. You're safe now. Jimmy's oh, not really something to cry about. Why he didn't? 
Why am I? Why, why, oh no, man. Harry? Why did he spare me? Oh no, man. After what he did. Why let me go? Mmm. So he was a victim. He wanted the pranksters. Got bored. Ooh, that's kind of mean, though. That's kind of a burn. He got bored. <laughs> You were not worthy of killing. You were just boring. Maybe he saw you as a victim? Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did to- These stupid hazing nights have to stop. True. Harry, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. Hell yeah. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. Oh, I literally played that. Thank you. This next one. I literally played that. Let's go. Is a soft spot? Mm, I think it's because maybe he knows her family. Like they were the only you know, people that were nice Carrie to her said, or him. It really got me thinking. About what? That's the only thing the I can kind of think of. Left her alone. Why? There like maybe the whistling reason. man knows when it comes to mass father? whistling killers i don't think something like that reason is a key part of their process Parents? well it's something to consider or he he admired her take a break if you want like, to stretch tenacity your legs, now's the time just hit the peggy button when you want to get back on air he admired her tenacity you know what i mean she she developed an entire plan he was like i'm too impressed to kill her i'm still so mad about this shit. so now now we know it becomes sticky notes because I'm over here fucking ass deep trying to figure this out. I don't even see those over there because they blend in. The more you know. That was such an easy one though too. I'm just so mad. That was just so easy. Okay, let's maybe we just keep the music let's keep on. Going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or scratch oh. that for us. Call. We have a caller. We got a caller. You're through to 189.16, the scream. The scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those Don? Kids. Still, I'm I'm glad the girls didn't get hurt. Don, you're such Thanks a downer. You know that, right? Concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song for us. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. Oh, I hate her. My name is Dawn. Oh, I hate her voice. And I wanted to ask you again to play my tune. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Uh, uh we don't but have it, though. We don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. Yeah, she threw it out the window. Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the no. loose. I can't just go outside no. for a record. <laughs> I'm really sorry, no. Dawn. But we just can't get it right Don't now. Don't do it. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? Don, shut the fuck up. You're not that important. It won't take you a second to grab it. You're not that important. You're not that important. No. Try again tomorrow. Back tomorrow when this is all over, Don. Uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest? Peggy, I'm... I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. She is what? fucked. Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. <laughs> Dawn well, sucks, folks, man. Here's some music for you while I think things over. Dawn sucks. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest. But we don't really have a choice, do we? Yes, we do. If she's telling the truth. Why don't you go, Peggy? Then why don't you You've been go cozy in there all fucking night. It's one of Reggie's KFAM regulations. Oh, I'm sure. I can't leave the booth while we're on air. I'm Peggy. sure. Just, you can do it, okay? Fine. Oh, I have You're a feeling a he's coming to me man, now. Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, okay. I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 
One Peggy, you would kill them so fast. The screw. With me, Peggy. Peggy, you'd be worse than me. Bitch. Oh my god, I'm so mad. I have to go out there. I'm so mad. No. Guys, I seriously think he's coming to me now because every time that I've gone out to check on stuff, I've known where he's at, and now I don't know where he's at because he went into the woods somewhere. So let's brace ourselves for the whistling man. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's this, bro. Whistling man. Why is it? Why is it close so fast? Ah! You're. F oh, you're fucking shitting me. I can't get back inside. Oh, you're fucking shitting me. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. Oh, you will be, though. Out here in the open. Hello? Oh my god, that was him. Oh my god, that was him. Get the fucking... Get it! Here it is! Long oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, that was him, 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 that was him. That, I just saw him right there. I can't run, so this is it. Guys, this is it, this is where I'm going. That was him. He's on the... He's, he's here. He's here. How do I get back? Ah! What the fuck? What is this? How do I get back inside? Well, this is broken. Looks like it'll be secure at least. It's... It's broken? Peggy! Of course. It locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Great. Guess I'm going to have to fix that elevator. Oh, just a little side quest. I see. A little side quest. I love side quests. I think they're so much fun. Especially when I've been in the groove of a game for so long and then all of a sudden I'm doing a side quest in a dark alley where I just saw a serial killer. I'm so excited for that. Okay, let's follow this and see where it goes. He was literally right there and now I'm going here and gonna fix this. Okay, how do I do this? 70? What does that even mean? A5? That's not the right one. Oh, they're everywhere. Okay, I see. They're literally everywhere. There's a fuse. Can't grab it though, right? Oh, yes I can, A30. So I have to equal 70, I bet. So let's take this one. Oh, okay, take this one, put it there. Uh, Switch it to this hand, take that. No. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt a Oh, I gotta take. Hold on, I gotta take all of them. Hold on. 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 Surely the whistling man can't attack me when I'm just fixing the elevator. Surely. Surely this is not a timed thing. Okay, let me get this one. Another thirty. Oh, so wait, thirty. There's already five. So get another five. Cool. 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 Um. Okay. Put this thirty, or put that five. And then put this 30. Right there. Boom. Bingo. Bingo. Let's go. Ah ha ha. Ah ha ha. Ah ha ha. Ah. Dude, the whistling man already made his way inside, I bet. I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet. I could probably survive that fall. Okay. Crouch. There we go. Oh my god, he's in here. Wait, how would he get in here? Janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clyde? Clyde. Oh. <gasps> Yo, don't do that. Holy shit, what the? What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. The fuck is in here? There's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. Former Gallows High School Captain Chuck Brody suffered a career-ending in injury as victim of festival disaster late last year. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully, he gets lucky and he can get back on his feet. Pun not intended. Drop tickets in the bucket below. I think we, I think we found the the killer, guys. I, I don't know if I should go through all of this. Kim Walker and Peter Stein. Kim. 
died though, probably. Kim Walker recommends local flu shot. I'm not really sure what a lot of those mean. That is fucking creepy. Okay, I got a key to the basement stairs, right? Oh, 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 oh. I did not mean to do that. Hmm, I wonder how the show's going. Not gonna go in there. Oh yeah, wonder how the show's going. Let's go check on that. Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Uh, something almost did something happen. Something did happen. Yeah. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. You heard what? footsteps? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked on. What just happened? Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement. Yep. Made by our creepy janitor. Yep. Who you think is the creepy whistling man. Bingo. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's oh, right. next target. We've okay. Find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, oh, okay, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. How? What the fuck? Okay, how do I figure that out? Let's, oh, everything's here for me. Thank fucking God, if I had to go back down there. Oh, all right guys, let's figure this out. Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody suffered career ending injury. We're buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky. Okay, two engineers that were contracted from the local power station. Lead engineer, Ant Williams and junior engineer, Sean Everett. That is neither of the oh aunt williams yo 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 wait investigators blame two engineers that were contracted from local power station lead engineer but that means they don't work there anymore let's keep that in mind then so we have two options here we have chuck brody who might be in the hospital and then we have aunt williams who oh wait what is this kim walker's a doctor though Christmas season upon us, 84 is no different than other year. Make sure you're protected. What year is this? This is 87. 87. Kim. Kim and Peter. Oh my God, this is so much. This is so much because it's, it's like, I figure out one thing and then another thing kind of makes me go, oh wait, what? Festival of disaster late last year. Festival disaster was 1972. We're in 1973 in, or we're in 1987. What the fuck? We're 1987, this is 1972. Okay, so Chuck is not in the fucking, he's not in the hospital anymore, so we can rule that out. Okay. Kim Walker is, might still be in the hospital because she's a doctor. Oh, so I'm thinking that it's Kim at the hospital. Because Festival Disaster was in 1972, so that means one, Chuck is not in the hospital anymore. Two, the guys that were in it, so Aunt, Aunt Williams, probably doesn't have a job anymore. Oh, wait a sec. Thank God I didn't go with my gut because I just fucking realized, okay? Kim Walker got married to Peter Stein, right? In 1970, look, deceased, the Stein family, Mr. P Stein and Miss K Stein. So that means M Kim is a no, she's dead. Kim is a no, she's dead. Chuck is a no because he's not injured anymore. Rebecca, I don't know anything about her. Remember the informant who asked me to us will hereby be referred to, oh, R.A., Rebecca Allen. So she is the car thief. Rebecca Allen. Christine's gas and repair has been sold to a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. The new the new owner claims it'll keep him busy on an evening. He has asked to remain anonymous. Oh, wait. He has asked to be remained anonymous. 
Oh, to help him on his road to recovery, we were buying him lottery tickets. Hopefully. I got it. I figured it out, guys. It's Chuck at the gas station. Chuck bought the gas station in... Okay, that took fucking forever to figure out, but I figured it out. How's it going? That took way too long to figure it out. I got it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Once Are I started organizing it, sure? it was better. It was We've better. We've only got one shot at this. Yes, let's do this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? It's Chuck. Chuck, Chuck Brody. Brody. And where will I find them? At the gas station. Gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. Holy shit, that took a long time. <laughs> you guys know I'm not very, very good at this, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hello. Chuck Brody. Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. Go. Hey. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Who is this? This is Boris Nash. Listen, the whistling man's back. We found a list with your name on it and- Oh God, it, it's today. Steve, I finally let myself forget, I- Forget what? Forget, for, forget what? Forget. No, no man, I gotta get out of here. Okay. I, I think he ran off. Okay. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck- Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? What the fuck? I, I, is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. Hello? Oh, Chuck! Chuck! Forrest, the whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Uh oh. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. The yeah. only ambulance? Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Okay. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get uh -oh. us into some music while I deal with this. Okay. Wait, what was it about today? Oh, was the thing today? The September 18th? But today's September 3rd. Interesting. I don't know then. Uh, sure. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. I'm playing it, Peggy, by the way. So take your time. Take your time, Peggy. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we? Me, you mean me? We? Right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. <sighs> I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Me too. Do I have to though? I don't really want to. I already saved Chuck's life. I mean, I did what I'm supposed to do. I don't get why I'm still going down there. I do not understand why I'm still going down here. But I will do it for the good of the community. The community which I hate. Because who wants to be in this shit town anyway? Okay, janitor's closet. Why is everything so grimy and gross? Oh, it's- I forgot it's in a locker. Ah! I don't like that. I'm closing. Closing. Closing, closing. Thank you. Who's that? Hmm. The key? Was this always here? I- I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. No, I actually grabbed it then. Oh! Oh! Disk key! Basement storage. Oh! That key. I- I thought it was the one on the table. I'm stupid. Okay, so basement storage. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm all turned around. Basement storage. Let's go. Hmm. I don't know. Why did the music stop? Hey, Forrest! Oh, I can't leave yet? Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, fuck off! Oh my god, I'm just gonna open that for right now. Um. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Okay. Okay. What? There's a tape player. Oh, it's because I didn't have it in the right hand. Okay, where do I? Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Oh, it's this. I can't see, bro. I can't see. There we go. George Bell. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Oh. After a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. Hmm. Ah. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. We keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. I like how she keeps saying we. Like she's fucking doing anything useful. I'm over here risking my life and Peggy just just sits in her comfy little booth all day long. And I'm over here discovering a serial killer. Hmm? And I'm gonna die. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from I'm just gonna chill right here for a sec. Okay. Oh my god, it is so dark. Brightness, please. Do, do, do. Oh, here we go. Oh, way better. Way better. Okay. Um, now there's a tape and a thing over here. No. Can you sh sh shut up? Shut up. Shut up. Storage thing. There we go. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been this running looks useful. Oh. Okay, um, so this is September 3rd, 1968. At 4 a.m., a call was received by a jogger, um, Miss Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body has been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene. That is George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents to see him, or they informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Okay, so George Barrow did die, um, but he was not the whistling man. He was not. Okay, next one is in a thing over here. Maybe, uh, boop, boop, boop. This, yes, throw away. Nope, throw, throw, please. No, throw. We're not gonna, okay, set it down. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found. Cortisol. Elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Yes. Yes, typically what happens when you get murdered. All right, let's find this next one. Uh, it is right here. Boss. Oh. Click that. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Oh. That's not, that's not good. That's not, that's not Pog. What is this? I don't know what that is, but we're just gonna ignore it. Ah! It is the coroner's opinion that 
the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a We've gathered that into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Oh, okay. Following that, he was moved. This has to be important. Shut off the recording. Interesting. Um, okay, so now we got this that says, so name of deceased George Barrow. The deceased is a Caucasian male, age 18. The cause of death is established to be drowning as shown by the signs of asphyxiation. Uh, abrevi or abrasions were found on the knuckles, likely from getting into fights from the past. Matches with known history of the deceased being aggressive. No other injuries were observed, and from the coroner's opinion, there is no evidence of foul play. Additionally, the preliminary toxicology report indicates that the deceased had a high level of alcohol in their blood. It is of the coroner's opinion that the deceased went swimming while intoxicated and resulted in drowning. That is not true. Um, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Why? Why, Virginia Sullivan? Okay. Um, that is not true, actually. I don't think I've... I don't think... I don't think they're doing a very good job. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. You are not dead. I'm a man who likes to stay informed. You are not dead. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. Okay. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. Interesting. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Drawing closer to the anniversary. None of what? Innocent, but I don't think we deserve killing. All I hope now is that I can save some folk from the worst. Oh. Okay. Okay. What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. Are we going to make it back to Peggy? Are we? Okay, so Clive is not the whistling man. I think maybe he was with George that night and George died. And I mean... Maybe that's the anniversary and he feels guilty and then people are dying and he wants to like figure it out or something like that. I don't know. But as of right now, it's it seems like George is not the whistling man. So I wonder who is. I mean, hopefully it's not like blatantly obvious by now because I don't think it is. I'm fucking scared though. I think I'm gonna get, I think I'm gonna get killed really, really soon. Uh, can we leave? Oh, there's still more I have to do? What do I have to do? Oh, Peggy, the intercom. Duh. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. It is. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming, 
drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. Yeah, no. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. When we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down huh. here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. True. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra. The jazz runner? Oh my god, That's the right. one I killed? She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did oh. it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. Oh. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. Oh, the reservoir. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Oh. Something like that. I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. And True. Sandra didn't make it either. My bad. In another tape, the coroner My bad on that to one. the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Uh -huh. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, Someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. Clive? It's starting to make sense now. This, this is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... For playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone. You Damn! Know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know. Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. Okay. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Yeah. Why didn't he just come out with all of this? Yeah. He said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Me too. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. Yes. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. I'm calling you right now. Ponty's pizza owner is the murderer. <laughs> Thank God you're back, Forrest. Just kidding. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Thank hey, God I'm already up ready. here. <laughs> Forrest.
Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? I don't fucking know. But we gotta do it and we're going to. Just gonna vibe? <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right. I'll get her on the line. Yeah, let's get Virginia in here. Okay, Forrest. Shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. Fredman Plunker here. Who's this? Yeah, oh, it's goose. 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 Goose, 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 goose. Where are you? Get your ass here. The party has moved. Oh my god. Oh, cool. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's pretty cool, though. Dude, she said we could raid her liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected her. Yeah. Of course, we're not drinking anymore. We're staying sharp. In case that whistling turd turns back up. Yeah, you go, Plunker. Old lady might need our help. Of course, man. Of course. Hey, could you put me on with the old lady? You know, to check if it's cool for me to drop by. Oh, there's that goose respect we yeah. love. <laughs> goose respect. <laughs> I'll grab her now. Uh, hello? Is this goose? Hey, <clears throat> hey uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Yeah. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. It's okay. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought I forgot about her, to be honest. I forgot I saved her. Easy. What if I didn't? We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening. Because I didn't save Sandra either, so I would have been screwed. What would I know? Um, Clive. Does the name Clive Cut to the mean chase. anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was oh, she did? I forgot what she said. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. No, he's not. We, we thought, thought so, so too, dude. But... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he, well. And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. This is all on air. This is nuts. I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I, all right. A false report? One day. I came into work to find a, a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. Carrots or the stick? You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said. And uh -oh. that if I ever spoke about this, He'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Really? I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. 
You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Speak for yourself, Peggy. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. So safe, now Clyde Virginia. is the bad guy again? What the fuck? I am confusion. So Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? I don't know. If only Sandra had made it. We could have talked to her too. I'm sorry. She was my first. It was shocking though. Yeah. It was shocking how she died. Oh my <sighs> God. <laughs> I'm sick of myself. Looks like we've got a call coming in. Dude, she was my first like failure. I'm very sorry, but I did not know what I was doing back then. My bad. My bad. So I'm kind of seeing how this is coming together where like if Call I had waiting for us. If I had saved those like few important people that we would have gotten more to the story. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know it's <gasps> really out of the blue with every Bounty. But I wondered if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. Now you wanna do that now? Really? Yeah, really. Why? Of course now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh fine. What's his name? Thank you. He's my Uncle Ronnie. Uncle his Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. Peter Ronnie. But since he <laughs> always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, yeah. history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start again, You son of a bitch! Stop calling us. Pepperoni. Damn it, Peggy. This is your fault. <laughs> My fault? It took me a fat minute. I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. But it's uh, Ponty. Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? <laughs> Happy birthday, Pepperoni. So stupid. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, Collar. Uh-oh. Collar. Yeah. Oh, he's laughing. <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Forest? <laughs> it's Ponty, guys. I'm telling you. Are you okay? The whistling man's Ponty. He's the only one not scared. Forest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forest? On Sorry. air? Sorry, that was. That was too much. On it's air? Okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Okay, another call, I can handle that. I've got Cleo on my lap now, I've got her magical powers helping me. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's <laughs> all I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Dawn, get the uh, fuck out of here. I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on, but please. Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. With what? Are you in danger? Uh, I sure am. Do you mean? Yes, he's after me now. 